Okay. So. <clears throat> so. <laughs> anything you want to say before we start? Um. No, I just. Uh, I don't know what you're gonna ask me. That's all. Okay. <laughs> Let's start with this. What's on this page? Okay. And uh, ask you to introduce yourself. Starting with your name and where home is. Okay. So, are you ready? Yeah. Okay. okay. My name is Rosemary Lang. I'm from Victoria, BC. Okay. And can you share something about the city of Victoria that's special to you? Well, the city of Victoria is just such a beautiful place. And it's got everything that anyone could ever want. And you drive any direction and you'll hit the water or have a scenic view. And uh, you've got lots of musical life, lots of arts. Okay, as Carol Honor, I'm uh, playing uh, up to 15 recitals per year, usually in the summer on a Sunday afternoon. I also play uh, for Symphony Splash. I play the grand finale of the 1812 Overture, playing the bell part in that. And I play uh, concerts for civic occasions and national holidays. I think bells are very important. Uh, the bells are um, a symbol of freedom and peace, but they also, I believe, have healing aspects to them as well. There's just something comforting about bells. It goes back to primal times. Uh oh, we're missing a couple. Oh, we're missing a note there. They need to fix something. It's terrible. That's the broken one. Not good. Uh, the last note? Yeah. They need to fix a wire. The, uh, they had such problems with the bells at St. Andrews that uh, during the 30s and the 40s, um, occasionally when something went wrong with the short circuit or something, bells instead of shutting off at 10 at night they would ring all night <gasps> so the hotels across the oh jeez oh no ooh that's bad yeah so uh oh that'll be about 30 seconds and then that'll be over There we go. Get that out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, there's a, a player, like a, you know, a digital roll sort of player. No, it's not a roll player. Well, it's not a roll, but it's a, it's a, what do you call it, a MIDI file that, that triggers it or something like that? Yeah, it actually triggers the actual instrument. So the batons are going up and down as if I were sitting there playing. Yeah. Oh, so there's a whole contraption that acts like a robot and, and, and moves the... Well, it's actually computerized, it's computer programmed to, to press certain notes at certain times, at certain intervals. But it doesn't sound like a human playing because it's all the same volume and all hitting at the same uh, depth and um, 
and so there's no loud or soft it's just very mechanical sounding compared to an actual person playing Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Could you tell me a bit about the history of bells? Well, bells date back to very ancient times, the ancient Egyptians and ancient Asian cultures. Bells bells have always been very important in those cultures. And they were said to also uh, have healing powers, being able to also scare away evil spirits, negative energy, and also bring in healing energy as well. Um, and then, uh, can you tell me, what do you think it would, it would mean to bring back the bells at St. Andrews? Like what would it, how would it benefit the city? How? Uh, I believe the city would be benefited by bringing back the bells of St. Andrews. I don't believe that the two sets of bells will be fighting for airspace. I think they have both have their place. They both have their importance and uh, you know the St. Andrew's bells will be more of a sacred nature calling people into the church and maybe comforting people, um, reminding people that there is a higher being and um, whereas the carillon is more of a concert instrument playing all different types of repertoire from folk songs to original works written for the instrument, right down to jazz and perhaps even rock music. Like I said, the function of bells today are more of a concert instrument. In, in this setting as the carillon, they're more of a uh, concert instrument. Um, church bells, however, do have their own function. I believe they're calling people to worship, reminding people of their past, and uh, reminding them of the comfort that the church can provide in times of stress. And um, you had some thoughts on Well, you know, the Rogers family is so important in, in Victoria. They, they go back in history and, um, you know, their chocolates are still being produced. People come from all over and they take home Rogers chocolates. And the Rogers family um, has donated the chimes of St. Andrews. And I do believe that they, the chimes should be restored because it's an important part of our heritage. Right. Thank you. Do you mind saying that beginning part again? Just I don't remember what I said. Okay. The Rogers family, they're important to the early history of Victoria and you know the chocolates were, were in production in the 1800s. They're still in production. There's still visitors who come from all over the world and take home Rogers chocolates. Okay, the difference between uh, a, a recording of the chimes and the real thing, the real instrument struck with hammers, is you're not going to receive um, the same vibrations and feel the same uh, frequencies that you would with the actual, uh, the real instrument. There's not the metal hitting metal with a recording. You're not getting it live. It's not the same sensation. So I think that the bells have... have um, many powers to draw people in whereas you know the organ is a wonderful instrument I'm an organist and so I would always vote in favor of the organ but unless a person is already in the building they're not actually going to hear or see the organ or hear the choir they're not going to hear the sermon the majestic sounds of of the choir singing the bells however people are walking by they're going to hear the bells they're going to say oh I hear bells where are they coming from isn't that beautiful? And then they're going to say, oh, this is a heritage building. Let's go in and look around. And then from there, then they're in. And this could be um, you know, part of your pastoral outreach to attract people in with the sounds of the bells. Pause. Oh, no. Okay. okay third so, time's the charm. Okay, you're going to have to say the question okay. again. So.
Could you tell me the difference between real bells struck uh, by hammers and electronic recordings played through yeah. speakers? Okay. What, what, is, what is the difference? Okay, the difference between uh, a, a recording of the chimes and the real thing, the real instrument struck with hammers, is you're not going to receive um, the same vibrations and feel the same uh, frequencies that you would with the actual, uh, the real instrument. There's not the metal hitting metal with a recording. You're not getting it live. It's not the same sensation. All right. Not, yes, that, that did make sense. Well, that's cool. Okay. Do you okay. want to say that again? Okay. okay. And then talk to me. Okay. So I think that the bells have have um, many powers to draw people in, whereas you know the organ is a wonderful instrument. I'm an organist, and so I would always vote in favor of the organ. But unless a person is already in the building, they're not actually going to hear or see the organ or hear the choir. They're not going to hear the sermon, the majestic sounds of, of the choir singing. The bells, however, people are walking by, they're going to hear the bells. They're going to say, oh, I hear bells. Where are they coming from? Isn't that beautiful? And then they're going to say, oh, this is a heritage building. Let's go in and look around. And then from there, then they're in, and this could be, um, you know, part of your pastoral outreach to attract people in with the sounds of the bells. That's great. Thank you very much. Okay.